the top stories tonight in Y News. A former Deputy National Security Advisor believes that changing or lowering the level of diplomatic relations between China and Philippines is unnecessary with the latest incident of harassment in the West Philippine Sea by Beijing. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PhilVox, expected to record aftershocks in two weeks after magnitude 6 earthquake struck Masbate. Several senators want to probe the alleged human trafficking using a private aircraft at the Ninoy International Airport. And Elon Musk, Twitter's current owner, hopes to find a new chief executive officer for the company by the end of this year. Good evening Philippines and the world. Today is Thursday, February 16, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am Maria Latoza. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Giona Privado. First in the news. A former Deputy National Security Advisor believes that changing or lowering the level of diplomatic relations between China and uh, Philippines is unnecessary with the latest incident of harassment in the West Philippine Sea by Beijing. Nel Maribohok will tell us why. Former Deputy National Security Advisor Designate Romel Banlawi has disagreed with the idea of former NSA Clarita Carlos that the Philippines should start lowering the diplomatic relations of the Philippines to China. This is following China's harassment of Philippine Coast Guard vessel using a military-grade laser. I consider that kind of proposal unnecessary and an overreaction. Lowering our diplomatic relations with China and also uh, interpreting the incident as a form of uh, military action will be inimical to the peaceful resolution of conflict in mm -hmm. the South China Sea. According to Banlawi, the Philippine government should continue the peaceful resolution of the maritime dispute in the West Philippine Sea. He also said that the two countries must immediately implement the bilateral agreement that was signed during President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. visit in Beijing last month, particularly the arrangement for the establishment of a communication mechanism on maritime issues between the Department of Foreign Affairs and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of China. We need to implement that agreement between the two concerned implementing agencies. So uh, in the case of uh, the situation on the ground, that means uh, strengthening communication procedures uh, between their respective Coast Guards. Last Tuesday, February 14, President Marcos Jr. summoned Chinese Ambassador to the Philippines, Wang Xilian, over the said latest aggressive act of the Chinese Coast Guard at Ayungin Shoal. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Foreign Affairs stands by the report of the Philippine Coast Guard, or the PCG, that the Chinese Coast Guard pointed military-grade laser light to the BRP Malapascua last February 6. The said ship is performing the resupply mission in Ayungin Shao. The laser tagging incident have caused temporary blindness to the crew of the PCG ship. China denied the accusations of the harassment on the Philippine ship and its crew. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin said the Chinese Coast Guard used handheld laser green light pointer to measure the distance and speed of the Philippine vessel. A strong earthquake struck Masbate and nearby areas earlier today. Aftershocks are expected for the next two weeks. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The magnitude 6 earthquake that was recorded past 2 a.m. today, February 16, registered intensity 7 
in Masbate City. Lower intensities was also recorded in other areas in Bicol and Visayas. The epicenter is in Batuan, Masbate with a depth of only 10 kilometers. Uh, strong earthquake na siya, especially dun sa malalapit sa lugar. Talaga mararamdaman yan. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology or FIVOX said the earthquake most probably originated in the segment of Philippine Fall. Strong earthquakes was also recorded in the area in years 2003 and 2020. FIVOX said that they are expecting aftershocks. Yeah, uh, siguro sig uh, mga a week to two weeks. Uh, from time to time, talaga may mga mas, mas mahihinang mararamdaman tayo, especially yung mga tao na nakatira uh, near the epicentral area. PIVOX reminded the public to participate in the nationwide earthquake drills being conducted by the authorities. Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. on elections or COMELEC is set to conduct a pilot testing of automated elections for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan elections on October 30, 2023. Dante Amenta tells us why. In response to the House Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms proposal, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC will conduct a first pilot testing of automated elections for the Barangay and Sangguniang Kabataan Elections or BSKE. This is simultaneous with the October 30, 2023 BSKE. The pilot testing will be conducted in Barangay's Zone 2, Poblacion, and Paliparan 3 in Dasmarinas City, Cavite, and Barangay Pasong Tamo in Quezon City. There are 84,100 registered voters for Barangay and 27,817 for the ESCA elections in the above-mentioned barangays. Comelec spokesperson Director Janrex Laujanko said the filing of the Certificates of Candidacy or COCs will be earlier in those barangays. The names of the candidates will be printed on the ballots. Laujanko added they will also study whether the next BSKE will be fully automated. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Commission on Elections, or COMELEC, will conduct the final Joint Security Command Conference on February 21, 2023 in Cavite. This is over the special elections in the 7th Legislative District of Cavite on February 25. The Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police will brief the COMELEC about the final security preparations for the special polls. These include the number of installed COMELEC checkpoints and security personnel to be deployed among others. And for our news abroad, Elon Musk Twitter's current owner hopes to find a new chief executive officer for the company by the end of this year. Neresa Danda explains why live. Good evening, Neresa. Good evening, Jonah. Twitter's current owner and chief executive officer, Elon Musk, hopes to find a CEO who will take care take over the company's management so that it may function without his direct day-to-day -day involvement. On Wednesday, February 15, Musk spoke through a video conference at the World Government's Government Summit in Dubai, expressing his thoughts in making sure that the company can function and is in a financial healthy place. Back in December, Musk released a poll asking people whether he should step down as Twitter CEO and more than half of Twitter's 17.5 million users voted yes. Meanwhile, Twitter is being worked on as a platform where people won't regret spending hours on it, as Musk strives to do after showing his dislike for the Chinese-made social media app TikTok. Yona? Thank you, Neresa, for that live report. The First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, announced her intention to resign was based on deeper and long-term assessment. Monica Canlas tells us why. 
After more than eight years in the role, the head of the Scottish government, the First Minister Nicola Sturgeon, was certain that her decision to step down is for the best interest for herself, her party and her country. She acknowledged the choppy waters, but her decision was a result of a more thorough assessment. The First Minister believed that serving well would require knowing as to when is the right time to make way for a new leader. Although the First Minister acknowledges the crisis, the democratic outrage for blocking the constitutional referendum, she strongly believes that there is already a majority support for independence, but must be increased and strengthened. It is expected that Mrs. Sturgeon will remain in office until her successor is in place. Monica Canlas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. We'll share more global stories with you later. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Behind the stories when one news returns. Pinatibay pang dedikasyon, serbisyo publikong maasahan anumang panahon. Sandigan ng Diyos sa paghatid ng katotohanan. Ito ang balita para sa bayan at sa buong mundo. Are you or someone you know experiencing a vision loss? It could be a sign of glaucoma, a silent thief of sight. Don't wait until it's too late. Protect your eyesight and get checked by health experts. Knowing the early detection and treatment can save your vision. Just watch Doctors on TV this coming Sunday, February 19, 2023, from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. And learn the proper way to keep your eyes healthy with our ophthalmology specialist guest, Dr. Maria Zita Zagala Marialis from Makati Medical Center, hosted by Dr. Sara Barba Cabudil, only here at UNTV, your public service channel. Ito ang tama at maling paggamit ng bleach kung gagamitin na panglinis sa bahay. Ihalo ang one-fourth cup ng bleach sa isang galon na tubig. Iwasan na paghaluin ng bleach at ang mga produkto na may amonia tulad ng panglinis ng salamin dahil makagagawa ito ng nakalalason na chloramide. Huwag haluan ng alcohol ang bleach dahil nakalilikha ito ng chloroform na makasasama sa kalusugan kapag nalanghap. Huwag din paghaluin ng bleach at asido dahil nakalilikha ito ng chlorine gas na kapag nalanghap ay makasasama sa baga. Tandaan na mahalaga ang kalinisan at kaalaman para maiwasan ang sakit. A reminder from UNTV, your public service channel. ang immune system ay kasama sa high risk na grupo kapag nagkasakit ng COVID-19. Isang paraan para mapalakas ang immune system ay ang pagkain ng prutas, gulay at fruit crops. Ang patatas ay inirerekomenda ng National Nutrition Council dahil sa mataas na vitamin C nito na makatutulong magpalakas ng immune system. 
may taglay din itong zinc, vitamin B6 at isang uri ng alkaloids na mahalaga sa maayos na paggana ng immune system. Tandaan na ang tamang pagkain ay makatutulong labanan ang sakit. A reminder from UNTV, your public service channel. Para sa akin, ang awitin ay para kong vitamina. Na para bang pag hindi ka nakapagpasalamat sa Panginoon, parang may kulang sa isang araw. So, sa lahat po ng mga composer na sumasali sa mga competition, katulad po ng ASOP, talagang ganyan. Manalalo ka, matatalo ka, makakabalik ka. Ang aral po dyan, huwag po tayong mawawala ng pag-asa kung sakaling hindi tayo napasama o hindi tayo nanalo. Gawin lang po nating aral ito na ito pa lang po ang umpisa ng ating pakikipaglaban o pakikibaka sa musika. Sa mga composer, patuloy po tayong lumikha. Huwag tayong magsasawa. Gumawa ng gumawa, lumikha ng lumikha, hanggang sa dumami na dumami ang inyong mga awitin. Para bang nagbabangko lang kayo ng kanta. Panatulihin po ninyong manood ng uh, A Song of Praise Music Festival every Sunday, 7 p.m. Being is not everywhere. His eyes are everywhere. Love comes from the most unexpected places. And it can also come in the most unexpected time of your life. Are we sure that we are making use of ourselves the way God wants us to use our lives? to refer to the manual of instructions and that is the Bible. We have to depend on what God can do to us. See and ask for the old path. It is the path wherein we can find rest for our soul. to Y News. Several senators want to probe the alleged human trafficking using a private aircraft at the Nino Aquino International Airport. The airport's management, meanwhile, says they are now investigating the alleged violation of the aircraft. Haleen Degado will tell us why. Senator Grace Poe is optimistic that the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee will soon call for an inquiry on the possible case of human trafficking involving a private aircraft. This comes after the senator revealed during Wednesday session an incident happened on February 13 at the Nino Aquino International Airport when the PNP Aviation Security Group or AVSA Group received an anonymous tip on a possible human trafficking activity involving a private plane bound for Dubai. The plane is operated by Cloud9 No. 1 Leasing Company Limited a Hong Kong registered leasing company with an assigned aircraft ground handler, Globan Aviation Service Corporation or Globan. Post says only six passengers were declared, but it was alleged that 14 individuals were set to board the aircraft. The senator revealed a copy of the general declaration that they obtained, showing that only three crew members and six passengers were on the list. However, based on the information from the Bureau of Immigration or BI, there were seven passengers on the list with different national so yung anim na na-clear, nakasok na, meron nag-attempt na walo pang papasok pero napigilan dahil nakita ng may nagbivideo. Pero bago isara ang pinto ng eroplano, may nakalusot na tatlo na wala doon sa manifest. The aircraft inspectors were said to direct the ground handler Globan to hold the departure of the plane, but the aircraft allegedly continued to take off. Agad nagpunta ang head ng PNP Aviation Security Group sa rampa at kuinestyon ng immigration officers. Una, kung bakit aalis ang eroplano nang hindi dumaan sa pre-flight inspection. Number two, bakit may mga karagdagang mga pasahero na wala sa general declaration. 
Mr. President, ang sagot ng immigration officer ay na proseso na raw nila ang mga karagdagang pasahero at clear to travel. Na ang mga ito kahit wala sa flight manifest, Post says the BI is now investigating the incident. In a statement, the Manila International Airport Authority, or MIAA, says the ground handler obtained necessary approvals for the entry-exit clearance from the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, exit clearance from the PNP AFSA Group, and the ramp entry clearance from the MIAA. It adds the passengers transported to the aircraft were processed and cleared by the BI on site. Despite this, the MIAA vows to continue the investigation on the incident in a bid to dispel insinuations that the passengers departed the country secretly. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, aims to open an institution to provide advanced skills on disaster preparedness and search and rescue operations. The agency will open a training facility before the year ends. JP Nunez will tell us why. The Metropolitan Manila Development Authority, or MMDA, is set to build a disaster preparedness training center in their property at the sanitary landfill in Carmona, Cavite. The agency said they will begin construction by the second quarter this year. The training center aims to improve and institutionalize disaster response measures among search and rescue units of the local government units. MMDA targets to open the said training center before the year ends. Yung pong construction ito will take about six months. So probably end of the year, mabubuksan po natin. The agency estimates that the budget for the project is about 25 million pesos, excluding search and rescue equipment they still need to procure. The Disaster Preparedness Training Center will feature four training facilities, including rappelling tower, confined space structure, wreck building with structure rubble pile, and pancake collapse structure. MMDA will also lend their search and rescue equipment to trainees to simulate real-life disaster scenarios. Acting MMDA Chairman Romando Artes said the duration of the training will be for two weeks based on their module. Dito po talagang trainers training at advanced training po ang ating ibibigay. Uh, talagang actual na po na pagbasag ng simento, nakatagilid, nasa ibabaw, nasa ilalim. Yung ganun pong klaseng training talaga ang ating pong ibibigay using yung mga equipments po na meron tayo na kailangan-kailangan po kung sakaling magkaroon na sa kona. The MMDA emphasized that the project is also relevant in preparation for the big one. According to 2004 study conducted by the International Cooperation Agency or JICA, FIBOX and MMDA, a magnitude 7 earthquake in Metro Manila could lead to more than 35,000 deaths and up to 350,000 collapsed structures. Lahat tayo ay maapektuhan kung sakaling dumating yung big one. Ang ano po natin dito, ang goal natin ay maka-rescue at maka-respond ng maayos kung sakaling dumating itong sakuna na ito. Kung tayo ay handa, educated yung mga tao, mababawasan po natin yung casualty. Yung isang buhay po na ma-save natin ay mahalaga. The training center will initially cater to 17 Metro Manila Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Offices and will soon accommodate other government agencies, barangay auxiliaries, fire volunteer groups, and rescuers from other provinces. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Trade and Industry intensifies enforcement laws related to vape products. This after the DTI confiscated some products in a vape shop in Manila today. Asha Kadapan Jr. tells us why. The Department of Trade and Industry has been tasked to enforce laws under Republic Act 11900 or the Vaporized Nicotine and Non-Nicotine Products Regulations Act. It aims to protect and promote the right to health of the people and instill health consciousness. 
but DTI Assistant Secretary Anne Claire Cabochan emphasizes the protection to minors against the use of vape products. She expressed her concern in the accessibility of vape shops where some can be seen within just 100 meters away from schools, which is against the law. Ang DTI po, kasi kami po yung naatasan sa batas to implement Republic Act 11900, ay pinag-iigting po natin yung ating surveillance. Tinitingnan po natin even on for online um, online shops and we will intensify mon, um, our enforcement. Today, the DTI conducted surprise inspection in a vape shop in Manila. The agency confiscated prohibited vape products being sold in the shop. So, sa batas, sinasabi doon, yung may fruit flavors, the dessert flavors, they have an enumeration. Pero pag flavored, bawal po siya. Yung isa ding bawal, yung dun sa design ng packaging ng vape ay very attractive to minors. In accordance with the law, the DTI issued a notice of violation against the business owner to give them 48 hours to explain about the said incident. The vape shop owner may be penalized 100,000 pesos even on its first offense and closure on the fourth offense. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Social Welfare and Development has allotted 5 million pesos standby funds and stockpiles of family food packs as an augmentation for the distribution of relief packs to quake hit residents of the city of Masbate. Based on the latest report provided by the DSWD Field Office 5, there are no reported families displaced by the magnitude 6 earthquake happened at 2 a.m. in Masbate. However, the DSWD Bicol region has allotted standby funds worth 5 million pesos and a stockpile of almost 80,000 family food packs and non-food items. Meanwhile, the DSWD Field Office 5 immediately activated its social welfare and development teams and quick response team to assist in the conduct of rapid damage assessment of the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Office. On this morning of Masbate City, uh, I asked, uh, he gave me an update and he said that there is no wide scale destruction, there is no wide scale evacuation. And then he offered to assist and he said, not at the moment because they have it under control. But I did assure him that if he needs further assistance, to just get in touch with me. All our regional offices have pre positioned cash on hand, pre positioned all the kits that we have, from food packs to family packs. Wednesday afternoon, tens of thousands of people were left scared as a magnitude 6.1 earthquake hit New Zealand. Paul Gachelian tells us the details live. Good evening, Paul. Good evening, Giona. The magnitude 6.1 earthquake hit New Zealand on Wednesday, February 15 at 7.38 p.m. local time and initially hit like a jolt which turned into a long and strong shake. According to Geonet New Zealand, over 61,000 people across the North and South Islands felt the quake. A majority of people experienced a big bump in their homes which eventually started shaking hard for 30 seconds before swaying. A weaker earthquake occurred around 20 minutes after the first, measuring at a magnitude of 4 which was felt by around 30,000 people. Fortunately, the National Emergency Management Agency reported that there would be no tsunami headed for the country and no major damages to the areas impacted. Meanwhile, Cyclone Gabriel makes its way through New Zealand. Four people have lost their lives, including a child, and thousands are left stranded as flights in the country have been cancelled. Back to you, back to you, Giona. Thank you, Paul, for that live report. Avian flu has spread to new corners of the globe and has become endemic, according to the veterinarians and disease experts who warned it was now a year-round problem. Anna Mancilia tells us why, live. Good evening, Annie. Good evening, Jonah. For the first time, avian flu has become endemic in some wild birds such as waterfowl, which can carry the disease without dying. 
Experts say these wild birds can spread a disease to poultry through contaminated feces, saliva, and other means. The prevalence of the virus in the wild signals that record outbreaks will not abate soon on poultry farms, according to more than 20 farmers and experts that Reuters have interviewed. Disease experts have warned farmers to focus to bird flu prevention efforts throughout the seasons and not just during spring migration, and it poses a serious risk all year round. Outbreaks of the virus have widened in Asia, Africa, Europe, and North and South America since the strain arrived in the United States early 2022. Argentina and Uruguay had both declared national sanitary emergencies Wednesday following the confirmation of Argentinian government of its first infection in wild birds, while Uruguay detected it in dead swans. Diona? Thank you, Annie, for that live report. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. An overseas Filipino worker or OFW was found dead in Dubai and has reportedly been in the morgue for more than a week. Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. 27-year-old OFW Mark David Gadingan of Bagong Silang, Caloocan City has worked as chef in Dubai for more than two years. In February 7, Mark was found dead in Dubai and authorities believe that the alleged suspect is a Filipino. His uncle, Emilio Ringalota, has been shocked after hearing the news from Mark's mother, who is also working as overseas Filipino worker in Dubai. <laughs> Mark's younger brother, Hart Gerald Gadingan, was also shocked with the sudden news. He said that he was supposed to enroll in his school when he has been contacted by their relatives that Mark passed away. Kung hindi nangyari sa in, kuya, sa ano masaya tayo na magkakasama, buo. Yung sinasabi mo na magre-reunion tayo, magsasama-sama lahat ng magkamag-anak. Pag-uwi mo, iba pala yung pagsasama-samahan namin. The family seek help in UNTV Servisyon Bayanihan Program where the agency immediately responded. According to Public Service Director Lani Lina Pinado, they will coordinate with the Department of Migrant Workers or DMW to provide proper assistance and for the fast resolution of the case. I refer natin siya kay Sir Bernard Olalia, yung undersecretary ng ano ng Department of Migrant Workers para ma-check yung case tapos um kung ano yung mga assistance na pwede natin uh, ibigay sa kanila like pwede, yung kailangan na maiuwi dito yung bangkay ni Sir Mark meron siyang uh, ongoing case mm -hmm. investigation yes. dun sa naging uh, pagkamatay ni Sir Mark so i yeah, assist po natin sila through the help of uh, Department of Migrant Workers the investigation of the death of Mark David Gadingan is still ongoing and for those who want to help the victim, the public may contact the number of Mark's uncle at 0956-637-3717. Bernadette Tino, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Philippine Health Insurance Corporation or PhilHealth will be expanding its hemodialysis coverage from 90 to 156 sessions. Gladys Tawabi will tell us why. PhilHealth will increase its coverage for outpatient hemodialysis from the current 90 sessions to 156. This increase in the number of sessions covered is based on standards for adequate dialysis, which requires three four-hour sessions every week for chronic kidney disease stage 5 patients. The agency targets to issue this new policy before August to ensure that the people and dialysis patients are informed and for them to be ready. 
Meanwhile, the agency has also introduced its new benefit packages. Among these to address mental health and malnutrition issue in the country. Despite the suspension of premium health increase, the agency has to continue with the rollout of new benefit packages. In line with its commitment of implementing several enhancements this year. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine Coast Guard or PCG on Thursday, February 16, blasted the statement of Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson Wang Wenbin in connection with the February 6 laser pointing incident in Ayungjin Shoal in the West Philippine Sea. In a radio interview, PCG advisor for Maritime Security and spokesperson for WPS Commodore J. Tariela has bel belied the statement of the Chinese Foreign Ministry that the Chinese Coast Guard was only using handheld equipment to measure the distance and speed of the Philippine ship and signal directions for navigation safety. Earlier, Wang at a press conference on Wednesday, February 15, has mentioned that a Chinese Coast Guard ship only used a handheld laser just to measure the distance and speed vessels, including the Philippine ship, to ensure for navigation safety. The Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson also denied that a Chinese Coast Guard vessel directed lasers at the Philippine crew. He also added that the handheld equipment used by Chinese crew does not intended to inflict damage on anything or anyone on the Philippine ship. However, Tariela has insisted that the equipment used by the said Chinese crew was a military-grade laser, explaining that it should be available in any market if it was just a regular laser. As the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we will leave you with the word giving glory to God from the book of 3 John chapter 1 verse 4 it says I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in the truth the reasons behind the news. February 16, 2023. Reasons we del deliver to you as they unfold. I am Giona Pravado. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am Mariela Toza. We serve the people. We give glory to God.